preach in the name of Jesus. Um, let's uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Help us, Father, to do Your will. Bless us this morning. Thank you for the blessings you've already given us in song, young people. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for the mercy. you've shown us. Amen. <clears throat> All right. I'd like to turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 1, therefore be imitators of God as, dear, as beloved children, <laughs> and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. But immorality and any impurity or greed must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. And there must be no filthiness and silly talk or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that with certainty that no immoral or impure person or covetous man who is an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them, for you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. In my Bible, that is in brackets. Verse 9 is, so if we took verse 8, For you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, to verse 10, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret, but all things become visible when they are exposed by the light, for everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason it says, Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is, and do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father, and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. We're going to stop there now. What I want to talk about is singing. <clears throat> and... Um, this is one of the places in the New Testament that it talks about singing. Speaking to one another, verse 19, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. When we think about singing, we think about, um, well, I think it's a universal thing. Everyone sings or likes some form of singing or hears some form of singing, listens to some form of singing or music, and um, it's not something that's confined to the church, uh, for sure. All you gotta do is turn the radio on or go anywhere nearly and there's music playing of some sort. <clears throat> uh, and the Bible talks a lot about singing. Some people say that singing is a command um, I'm not sure that I would necessarily go there, but I would at least say that it's a directive and it's something that's expected of God's people uh, because of his great mercy that he's given to us. 
because we sing about what we love. That's what we do. We just, people sing about what we, about what they love. And uh, it's an expression of the heart. And whatever's in the heart is what's going to come out. And uh, it'll come out in, with, in some way, somehow, but often it comes out in singing, even in people who don't really know how to sing very well or sing very good at all. So they'll be humming a tune or whistling or, or um, singing it in their mind and humming it as they're working or, or whatever. It's a, it's a, really it's a beautiful thing when you think about a, a spoken word. Just like you can, you can, uh, um, you can speak a word. You can give a, a, a poem. You can read a poem. And, uh, but when you put that same poem to music, it just comes alive. It's just, uh, it's a different, it's a, it's a different realm than just reading something or hearing something said. And, and uh, it becomes an emotional part of our understanding. And, and it links what's being said to the very depths of our soul somehow. And I don't know how that works. It's a mystery. But singing does that. <clears throat> And it's very, very powerful. Uh, music is a very powerful thing. For instance, I mean, for example, I can go into a restaurant or a, a store and hear a song on their speaker system that I haven't heard for probably 40 years since the late 70s or something, just a radio song or whatever, and, and I'll know it immediately. I identify with it. And the words, there they are, right there in my mind, hidden for 40 years that I didn't even probably, hadn't heard it for that long, or at least 30 years. And, um, and, and then I'll go out of the store and get in the car and be going down the road and that song is going over and over in my mind. I, like, I got to do something about this. <laughs> I mean, if I don't want it there. And so I just try to sing something or turn a, some music on or something. And it'll it'll leave me thankfully, but uh, that's it's pretty powerful. Um, uh, it's been said that show me a group what a group sings, and I'll show you what that group believes, and uh, and that's very true. Um, John and Charles Wesley were the founders of the Methodist movement, and they much of their movement was propelled through singing. And, and they had even rules for singing. They had ten, John Wesley had 10 basic rules of singing. And he was, they were very methodical about it. <laughs> and they were very uh, adamant about it. Very, it was very important to them that singing be done and be done with zeal. Sing, sing as much for the Lord as you used to for the devil, you know, and things like that. And, uh, don't draw it out and just uh, um, sing with and live, you know, lively. Sing, sing like you, you love the Lord, if indeed you do. And if you don't, sing anyway like you do, and you might end up loving Him. <laughs> That's my word. But anyway, the power of uh, music. Um, you know, thinking about the mid 1800s and thinking about. The, what was going on in this country concerning the North and South, um, the divisions between them. And probably one of the biggest uh, literary works to propel the war between the states was the book Uncle Tom's Cabin. And, uh, and but whatever whatever nails she, Harriet Beecher Stowe, drove in that, with that book and clinching that war thing would have been actually driven deeper by the words that Julia Ward Howe wrote in the Battle Hymn of the Republic because according to what I've read and I, I've seen this many times, that hymn or that song became a uh, driving force uh, for the North. 
that became it became to them the war became to them a a a, a holy endeavor. It became a righteous act. It became they were the the uh, the uh, preservers of righteousness uh, as far as this country was concerned. They they really believed that and. Uh, but before that, not, they didn't quite have the support. They may not have even won the war um, because not everybody in the North was really for the war. And, you know, most people just wanted to live their lives and, and wanted to let everybody else live theirs. And, uh, but that song really drove uh, home for a lot of people that were kind of riding the fence on the war thing. Uh, drove at home that this is right. This slavery thing's wicked, and uh, we need to uh, give ourselves for this effort. And one of the stanzas says, um, "As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free." His truth is marching on, and uh, so this became a. I mean, they would sing this in prisons, they would sing this on the battlefield, they would sing this in churches. It was just immensely popular instantly. I mean, and it was written in 1862 after the war had already started. And uh, it just gave a, 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 just a spring in the step of the whole northern um, um, endeavor to uh, keep the South from leaving. And so, you know, whatever you think on that all, that's not the point. The point is, is that music has a powerful influence on our lives and on our minds and on the way we live, the way we do things. Um, it, it's, just, it's just like this, this Sunday and last Sunday, I, it's, just, it's just thrilling. I mean, it's just like, wow, we're getting a breath of fresh air here. It's almost like a revival and we didn't even have a special speaker. I mean, or any of that. It's just the Lord is blessing us, and I, I really appreciate you young people in, in doing that, and I thank the Lord for showing us this, I, you know, or whatever, however he led all this about, but it's a blessing. And, and it's powerful. It's, gonna, it's going to show itself powerful in, in the lives of our, of our young people and of, of ourselves. <clears throat> Um, when we were on our float trip, uh, some of the boys were off to the edge of where the men were sitting visiting uh, and were started to sing some hymns as they've done the last year or two. And uh, just kind of an impromptu thing. They just kind of decided to do it and did it. Nobody said to do it, I guess. None of us, anyway, that I know of. Anyway, and it was, uh, it was just a blessing to hear them over there singing hymns. Well, the next day... Um, I went to the store at the campsite store and to buy something or do something, whatever I was doing. And um, there was a couple in there that was also doing some business with the lady. And, and then she said, one of them said to me, was that your group that was singing last night? And I said, yeah, that was some of our boys. And the lady said of the the couple there, she said, that was just really nice. She said, that was so nice. She said, I, I grew up in a church that sang those old hymns, she said, and I could just sing several of them right along with them. And she said, that was just really neat, really neat. They really enjoyed that. And she said, our church now doesn't sing like that. <laughs> and a lot of churches don't. You can look up online about hymns and, and the over and over I've read about um, people that are just lamenting the fact that Hymns are leaving, just solid hymns. And uh, I remember Moe Stolzfus saying about the song, Isn't He? Uh, and I looked it up and it's just, isn't he, isn't he, isn't he, and isn't he wonderful and isn't he glorious or whatever, and just a whole bunch of that. And then at the end, it ends up with like eight or 12, I can't remember, there's an even number, but of isn't he, 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 isn't he. And that's how it ends. And uh, Moses said, uh, he said, it makes me want to go to the highest mountain and yell, yes! <laughs> he is! Now let's go on, what is he, you know? It's just, the, the difference in that 
And I, I sing the mighty power of God who made the mountains rise, spread the flowing seas abroad, and built the lofty skies. I sing the goodness that ordained the sun to rule the day, moon shines full at his command and all the stars obey. I mean, that has some substance to it. It's talking about creation. It's talking about something that God did, we're praising him for it. We're not only praising him for it, we're learning that. Our children are learning that in the form of a song that they'll never forget. Just like that lady never forgot. She knew those things. And songs, hymns, and spiritual songs have a way of teaching us the doctrine of God in a, in a, in a way that's living and alive. And we can apply and use not only when we're happy, but also when we're sad or tormented with some affliction and when we're tempted. Let me ask you, young men, when you're tempted to do something evil, what song's gonna help you? Is it gonna be one you heard Alan Jackson sing or one that you heard in church or that you know that the Lord would approve of or whatever? I mean, I'm not saying everything in the world is wrong. There's some ballads that just have a neat story to them, and I understand that. But it's important that we consider the power of music and what our hearts love to go after. And that ought to be a thermometer telling us, and I know everybody isn't the same and all that, but the, the truth's still the truth, no matter who we are or, or how much we, we love uh, or, or how much we, what we enjoy, what our, what our likes and dislikes are. But we can, when we consider God the object of our uh, existence, can we really sing about much else? <laughs> I mean, I, you know, sometimes I sing to my wife, I sing, Oh, Elizabeth. I think Statler Brothers sang it or somebody, I don't know. I don't even sing all that because it ain't fit. But I just start with the first line, you know, and she understands. And, uh, and that's, you know, there's, I'm not an absolutist saying you just can't do this or that. But the point is, is that there's power in, in music. And it's, it's a uh, very, very powerful thing. For instance, uh, point in check, David was a man after God's own heart and he was a sweet psalmist of Israel. The Psalms are music. Psalms are songs. They weren't just what we, you know, we go through, we read a psalm and let's turn there. Just, just turn to Psalm 112. In the Septuagint, it's 113 Masoretic text. Praise the Lord, O you servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this present time and unto the ages. From the rising of the sun to its setting, praise the name of the Lord. Now, I've just read that, but I don't know what music David was using. I don't know... And another thing we don't know, or I don't know, someone may, but um, in Hebrew, this very well may have had rhyme scheme to it. But when it's translated in our language, it may not rhyme. Just like from German to English, it doesn't always rhyme. Spanish to English, it doesn't always rhyme. Um, so each language has its own words for our words, or our words for their words, whatever. And, but to them, it may have had a, a flow that rhymed and, and a music that fit it perfectly. And, and that's, uh, all of these were songs. Who is like the Lord our God? Who, dwell, who dwells in the highest? And who looks upon the humble things in heaven and on earth? He raises the poor man from the earth and lifts up the poor from the dung hills so as to seat him with rulers, with the rulers of his people. He settles the barren woman in a home to be a joyful mother of children. This is a song. This is just one of the things, one of the many things God does and that David loved to sing about. <clears throat> 21st 
Turn to Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Talks about singing as well. And I think it's the same. It seems like that Paul wrote one letter to the Ephesians and maybe the same night wrote one to the Colossians. I don't know because it sounds the same. And right after it, this exhortation, he talks to wives and husbands and children just like he did in Ephesians. So, but anyway, whenever it was, it says, uh, verse, uh, let's start in verse 12, Colossians 3, 12. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other, Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you, with all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another, with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to the Lord. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. <clears throat> you know the story of the Pied Piper, don't you? You know, he, they asked the man in, uh, in uh, I forgot the name of the town in Germany, Anybody know that town? Hamlin. Hamlin, Germany. Um, it was overrun by rats. Well, they said, well, there's this man that could play and get them to follow him. So he said, okay, I'll do it, but for 50 guilders or however much money it was anyway. And uh, the mayor agreed, and he came and played his instrument and all the rats followed him to a lake and drowned. Well, the mayor didn't pay. So one Sunday when the, all the parents were in church, and I don't know why the children weren't with them, that's where the story goes, uh, he went and played and led off all the children, I think as many as 300, and they never saw the children again, except for the few that couldn't go because the lame or blind or for some reason couldn't hear one. Anyway, so that's how they knew what happened. Well whatever about that story and why it all happened I don't know or if it you know whether it's all just a story about something else or what but the point is, is that the the music was alluring and uh, and that's the way way it is today and once we were at a place I was with David he was preaching and afterwards this we were talking about how we do things, and, and uh, there were some other brethren there too. And this man said, uh, talking about the uh, internet, he said, do you have filters? And I replied, no, we have fathers. So and my thought there is that uh, you fathers, it's, it's your responsibility to direct, to direct your sons and daughters in what they see and hear. Um, and I, you know, I don't think it, um, not necessarily with a hard line or way, but like it says in First Corinthians, or Second Corinthians one, I'll just turn there and read that. Um, for the son. 1 verse 19, for the Son of God, Christ Jesus, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silvanus and Tim Timothy, was not yes and no, but is yes in him. For as many as are the promises of God in him, they are yes. Therefore also through him is our amen to the glory of God through us. Now he who establishes us with you is Christ and anointed us as God, who also seated us and gave us the spirit in our hearts as a pledge. I mean, we need to teach our children, not just don't, but do. I mean, because if they just don't, they're going to do anyway sometimes. Somehow they're going to find how to do. So if we teach what to do and teach a higher way, 
It's like that song that says, Oh world, thou art too small, I seek another way. <laughs> I mean, if, if the world is just that wonderful, enticing place with all this beautiful music and beautiful things, but we can't do it. Someday, likely, they're going to do it, at least partially. But if you just see the world for what it is and teach your children that, teach them that this music that is so alluring, what is it really? What is it really? And what is it, where does it lead? And where is it going? It's just a funny little jingle. Don't pay much attention to it. Don't even know all the words if you hear a song like that. But look at that. Look, look at the, what it produces. Look at who loves it. Look at what it produces in them. And this is, uh, you know, it's, its design is to attract and then pull one on you. <laughs> Just like all the devil's devices and vices. He attracts and he allures and then he slips in something that you know shouldn't be there. But, you know, and we all hear things, we all see things that has some of that. But what happens is this song becomes something that's kind of catchy, you kind of like it, so you remember it. And it's got that bad part in it, but, you know, I don't think about that part. Well, then for long, it's just, we know it. We know the song. And so it's just almost kind of fun. But which, what would you like to be? I mean, you, when you fill your heart and your mind with these things, then you get to be an old man, you're lying there on your deathbed. What would you like to be going through your mind? Some of those or some of the Lord's songs? What songs do the old people in the nursing homes like to listen to? They want to hear Johnny Cash? Or they want to hear Old Rugged Cross or something? They know where they're headed. They know they're headed to the end. <clears throat> but you have the opportunity To not try to erase all that out of your hearts and minds. You have the opportunity to put good things there. Right from the start. Your parents have made decisions that's allowing you to start clean and fresh. Don't abuse that privilege. It's probably the most foolish thing a young person can do is to throw what their parents had given to them away. <clears throat> when it's something that's good. So be, beware of what you give your ear to listen to because it's a gate to the heart. And your eyes to see. It's another gate to the heart. And what you put in there is what it is. So it's going to come out. <clears throat> David was the uh, sweet psalmist of Israel. But some, I think, have said that same thing about Watts for England. Isaac Watts. Um, he was a young man. At a, I mean, when he was a little boy, he uh, right away uh, showed himself to be very rhymy. Very, uh, he liked making little rhymes and things. 
He was once asked why he hadn't opened, why his eyes were open during prayers, to which he responded, a little mouse for want of stairs ran up a rope to say its prayers. So he's watching a mouse, I guess. And he received uh, corporal punishment, this says, for that, to which he cried, oh, Father, Father, pity take, and I will no more verses make. But he didn't hold true to that either, did he? Thankfully, he kept making verses. And one of the songs that he wrote later is one of the songs we sang, you sang this morning. But he was uh, somewhat contemporary with Charles Wesley. Charles Wesley was younger than him. But um, Watts wrote, uh, um, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, on which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I count but lost and poor contempt on all my pride. And that, that hymn's just full of rich. And I mean, <laughs> you, you put that up against isn't he, there's no comparison, none. Doesn't even, it's just like, dark and light, day and night. Charles Wesley said of this, that song, he said, I would have given all mine to have written that one. And these men just love the Lord, but that's all it was. They didn't. They weren't trying to do anything necessarily special. It just came out because they loved the Lord. And that same thing can happen with each of you or any of you. Not everybody's going to write hymns or be really interested in singing a lot, but everybody is interested in singing. Everybody is interested in music. Nearly everybody. I don't know anybody that music doesn't affect. <clears throat> we need to lay these things to heart, ponder these things, ask ourselves, what do we love? And why do we love it? And ask yourself, is that really true? Don't be fooled. Alan Jackson once said in one of his songs, I learned a lot about life and a little about love. Later, he and his wife separated because of his infidelity. How much did he learn about love? Thankfully, they got back together. Randy Travis said, I'm going to love you forever and ever. He's divorced. Remarried. He didn't love her forever and ever, did he? Or if he did, he's loving two at once. It's not what it seems. It's not. <clears throat> Build yourselves up in the faith, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Melody is a sequence of notes that is musically satisfying. God wants us to be satisfied in Him. And He knows that's the only place you can be, really. It's such an empty thing, this world. But God satisfies. And when you fill your heart with thoughts and about God and songs about God. It, he loves that. He loves that. Just like you would if you were a dad and your son loved you and you knew it. That's what, that's what, or more than that, but that's a little like it is with God. He loves when we love him.
He loves to hear the fruit of our lips expressing his praise. Not just, he's not selfish. It's because that's, that's in order. That's proper. That's where it belongs. Who else is worthy of our praise? Who else is worthy? No one was worthy to take the book and open it in Revelation but the Lamb. And he's worthy until that time for us to open our mouths and praise him and render to him the calves of our lips sacrifices of praise which are well pleasing to the Lord. And that's just the way it is. I mean, that's just, that's just the way it, and when you love God, you will sing. Somehow, some, a little bit anyway, it will come. Because it's just, he said, from the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks, and out of your heart, the issues of life, and it will be a well of life springing up in you to other people. And it's just going to come out. So I'm real thankful for what we're doing here. The young people and all of us are encouraged with that. It's a real, real um, encouragement and just enlightening. It's a blessing. Thank you for your efforts in doing that. Because it's not always easy to do the right thing. It's not always easy to, you know, not listen to something you shouldn't. It's not always easy to do something you should. But God doesn't expect it to be easy. A sacrifice isn't easy. But once you begin, it begins to flow. It's just happy. There's no set rules necessarily on when and how. I mean, Jesus and the apostles, after he said, I'm not going to drink of this cup anymore until I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. After they sung a hymn, they went out. <laughs> it just, just happened. They just needed to sing, I guess. I mean, and they didn't even understand what that meant. They just, what is this he's saying? <laughs> but they knew he was there, and they were there. What more of a reason to sing? Guess what? He's here. We're here. We need to be a singing people. God's people are singing people. And there's been many studies done by many secular groups as well, not just, the, not just Christian groups, on the power in music. There's been autistic children that didn't even speak hardly. Until they or make any noise until they heard music and just opened their lives. And, uh, and people that couldn't excel, couldn't get over some great hindrance in their life, but music helped them do that. And uh, so God knew what he was doing when he invented music, when he taught the angels to sing, and when he taught us to sing. And not only that, but he gave us the greatest gift to sing about himself. So let's uh, thought about this a long time. It's not that earth shattering, but it is pretty important. Singing is something we're always going to be around. We're always going to hear. So let's consider it. Consider it well. God bless you.